So the origin of the regional strategy, so how do the provincial plan and the regional plan work together? I come from a city planning background and the way I see it is as if you have a city master plan and, and neighborhood plans. The neighborhood plan, don't, they don't contradict the city's master plan, but they are specified and more detailed based on the unique qualities of that particular neighborhood. So they work in conjunction, but the neighborhood plan just takes it to the local level and can talk about things that are particular to that neighborhood. So in the same way, our regional poverty reduction plan is localized and makes sense for what we're dealing with here in Charlotte County. And I'd give an example uh, would be in the first provincial poverty reduction plan, they talked about providing funding for community transportation alternatives like Dial-A-Ride. Dial-A-Ride is a volunteer taxi service. And we already had one um, um, long before ESIC actually started. And Charlotte County was the kind of model region for Dial-A-Ride working well. So for us, when we looked at that um, goal of uh, uh, transportation alternatives, we needed to take it a step beyond Dial-A-Ride. So what we did in our plan, we started looking at how we could get a um, public transit service, scheduled public transit, so a bus, um, working in this region. Because we have um, a regional hospital that's an hour, an hour and 20 minutes away that a lot of our residents have to go to to use for all kinds of procedures that can't be done in our little local hospital. And we also don't have a way for people without cars to get from one town to another. We have a lot of major employers that have big shortages of, of uh, workers. And then there's some communities um, 20 minutes away, 30 minutes away, who have uh, an excess of people who are looking for work. And obviously, uh, a public transit service is it's going to be helpful in many regards. So that's how we made it localized and how that can work. Um, go to the next slide. So the way we created the plan uh, initially involved six community consultations across our thinly populated region of about 26,000. Now this involves islands that you have to take a ferry to and um, long distances that you have to drive and some of these communities are quite isolated from others so it was it was actually quite necessary to do six and each each consultation had about 10 to 25 participants and most of those participants came from just uh, all walks of life they were not it was not over overpopulated necessarily with people coming from um, other nonprofits who've already have vested interest in the talk about poverty reduction but a lot of people just came came out grassroots because this is it's such a, a serious problem here um, for many years that people know something needs to happen and they're excited that the province is actually responding with the creation of the SINs and the creation of ESIC and the um, opportunity to get more grant funding for poverty reduction initiatives. So it generated a lot of excitement. Um, so we took the um, data generated in these six community consultations, had some working groups to distill down the achievable objectives that could, um, could work with the Provincial Poverty Reduction Plan. And then we created the bridging the, um, our plan, Bridging the Gap. Now, we have since updated Bridging the Gap, and we have more updated priorities. And we do this because we need to be up to date on what the current opportunities for poverty reduction are. That uh, public transit service I talked about has since evolved um, from that first regional plan we did, and we're now on, this, on the stage of having a transit authority in place. We're looking at, at we have basically everything but uh, a bit of startup capital kept started early next year, and that bus is, is going to go. So our plan constantly needs to be updated based on what's happening on the ground. So every two years we have to update it. Right now I'm doing a uh, consultation method called scenario planning where you look at future scenarios for a community. I already did one 
and plan to do more to be representative of the whole region. But it's an interesting research method, and it gets participants to imagine their region 20 years from now. And then once they looked at different alternative scenarios, uh, entirely plausible scenarios for the future of their region, then they can see what are we doing today to reduce poverty, and how how are we going to be uh, how are we going to be shaping the future with what we do today? So it's a it's an interesting interesting approach, and I can share more about that. But it's uh, it's fairly detailed on how to how to do that kind of research.